How do we heal the past? We're going to talk about this tonight. This is Tom Karen with the Be Something Wonderful Studio of Higher Consciousness in San Diego, California, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Guys, welcome back. Uh, I want to talk about this idea of healing the past. We've talked about um, revision in terms of Neville Goddard, in terms of revising the past, uh, his, using your imagination uh, in his teaching. You guys can, if you haven't seen that video yet, it's in, it's in the library. But the idea that you can revise by imagining what the outcome that you wanted, you can revise the past that, which would affect the present and the future, right? It really, when you revise the past, you're revising that energy of the past. You're looking at the past in a different, from, from that higher perspective, from, that, from your inner being, from that alignment with your God consciousness. And when you start with that, that when you start looking at things through alignment, alignment with that inner you, alignment through that, that higher you, then that does change everything. It not only changes the past, it changes the present, it changes the future. I wanted to talk a little bit about how to heal the past, according to David R. Hawkins, who wrote Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. He also wrote a dozen books, at least, um, about higher consciousness and all of this. And we'll, we'll touch on some of this. And really, good, um, really good insights. But I want to talk about his view in terms of the emotional, um, the emotional connection that we have to past events, especially tragic events. Or, or any event that, that, has, uh, that has shaken us in the past, right? Any event that has, um, I hate to use the word scarred, but emotionally um, affected us, that, that can trigger um, emotions now. Here's how, here's how he talks about it. And I love it because it ties right in really with, with what we talked about with Neville Goddard. In fact, if we combined revision with what uh, David Hawkins is talking about, I think it's a really effective... Um, method to try to look at these past events and try to get past them and, and heal the emotion, the emotional impact from them. The first thing he talks about is put the events in a different context. So in other words, give them a different meaning. I put one and two together. So, so and you've heard this, people that have gone through tragic events or, or life-shaking events, those, those, you know, the night of the, 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 the ones that really shake their life, the ones that really recover quickly are when they, they look at it differently. It, it changed everything. It get, it, they had to look at everything. They had to look at all the emotions that they might have been repressing. They had to look at themselves in a whole different light, right? The event, the life-changing event, shook them so much that they had to take a look at everything. And they put it, usually they put it in a, a, a learning context, right? That they got something out of it. That it, um, and so here is the third one, acknowledge the hidden gift in it. There's always a gift in it, right? Usually, and what David Hawkins is saying, what we talk about a lot, is that it's your higher self, um, that, that greater consciousness, orchestrating that event, knowing that you needed that, that, you needed that to, to move in a different direction, right? Even though some of those events can be quite sh jolting and, and shocking, um, so the idea is put it in a different context, give it a different meaning, and then your attitude is changed to it. You're creating a different attitude. The, the trauma and the drama and the tragedy, there's a hidden lesson in it. There's a hidden gem. Everything, um, and again, that could come from that God consciousness, really, that's where that comes from. He even talks about uh, Carl Jung um, and, and this idea that... Um, it, un it uncovers the shadows, the shadow feelings, the shadow emotions that we've been burying, these, these sort of life-changing events, and forces us to look at them. And remember what I told you before, what you, what you resist persists. So if you repress emotions, if you don't look at them, um, they continue to stay there, right? What you look at disappears. If you look at it, and then, and this is what he goes, it's a lot more to it, but this is what he talks about in terms of those lower level emotions, those lower uh, fear, anger, resentment, jealousy, all of those, that, that if you bury them and repress them, they continue. But if you look at, it's like running away from them, right? You can't run away from them. Um, you can't, re it's, it's really that resistance, right? When you, re when you repress, you're resisting. 
and what you, you resist persists. So what you look at, and this is looking at it like a, this is what he's getting at is these, these life-changing events force you to look at these, at these emotions, for, forces you to look at things that you might have not been paying attention to or, you know, he talks about repressing them, he talks about expressing them or, or, um, or, or running away from them. Essentially, you know, this is where addictive behavior comes, right? Covering them up by other behaviors. And so this is the best, you know, so when these events happen in life, they, that's why you hear often people say it was a blessing. Why? Because it gave them a chant, it, it gave them a whole different direction that their higher being, that higher self, that God consciousness needed to show them. And, and so that was your inner being, that was your higher consciousness, your higher self pushing you in that direction, knew, knowing that it was, it, that that's the only way they can, that they can trigger you to look at this stuff, to look at inside at these shadow emotions, right? That Carl Jung talked about, these shadow emotions that get buried, right? Um, and then uh, also uh, Hawkins talks about, he brings up Viktor Frankl, um, Man's Search for Meaning, and that's a great example of, of, of turning tragedy into meaning, right? Turning tragedy into, to, to in, in Victor, in this great famous quote from Viktor Frankl, everything can be taken from a man but one thing. The last of human freedoms, he calls it, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way, right? It is that power. We've talked about the power of choice. We talked about it in a... In, sort of a lighter way in reality transurfing, which we'll get back to, that we get to choose, we get to intend. So imagine this, what he went through in the concentration camps. And, and I mean, really he went through what we would say is hell, right? A lot of suffering, but he, he, he looked at it as an opportunity, a gem to find that inner meaning, which we're all looking for, guys. I think that's, you know, we, and, and also Hawkins talks about that when we're in, most of us are in survival mode or, or we don't fear life so much, we fear the emotions. It's the fear of the emotions that life can cause. So I thought that was an interesting way to look at it. It's the fear of fear, the, <laughs> right? It's the fear of fear. We're not fearing life so much, but the emotions, the sadness and tragedy and these things that these emotions can, can garner. Uh, we'll talk more about this. He's got some great insights in terms of, of, of that, that it's not so much the thoughts, although thoughts do cause, you know, thought, we talked about the thoughts, feelings, thoughts, feelings. But once you get at that, there's usually a one emotion or two emotions that cover most of those thoughts. And so you, the thoughts just keep going. So his, th his idea is, is that you get at the emotion. You look at the emotion and then you let it go. His the whole idea of this book is surrendering the emotion, surrendering, letting go. There's a great freedom. Every spiritual teacher has talked about it. I like the way he's looking at it. We'll talk more about from his book, but there is that power in letting go, surrendering to it, right? Just not carry, you know, looking at it, not resisting it anymore, because resisting it, you hold on to it. You can hold on to it your whole life, right? It could be resentment, it could be, fear, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? Facing it and letting it go. Wow. A lot of power in that, guys. A lot of power in that. We'll talk more about David Hawkins, but I like the way he talks about healing the past. And then I think if you combine that with Neville Goddard about revising the past, you, it's a great way of looking at the past. First, you put the event in context, like Viktor Frankl did. Acknowledge the hidden gift. Not easy, right? None of this is easy you know, look at the emotions and then let it go and surrender to it. And then with um, Neville Goddard's idea of, then you go back and revise it. How would you like to see it? There is a lot of power in that because remember, it's all energy, past, present, and future is at the same time. Um, uh, times of construct, I mean, that gets us a little, um, a little further off track that I wanted to hit today, but Hawkins talks a lot about the spiritual side, the consciousness, so I want to get into that. But guys, this is very powerful. Put the events in con a different context. Give them a different meaning. Acknowledge the hidden gift because there's always a gift in it. 
and 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 in all tragedy and and trauma, there's a gift. Or I, I don't like to be a lesson because we're not here for lessons, right? In life, he also makes a great point that I made early, in an earlier video. That we've got to drop these bogus beliefs, these false premises, that life's about no no gain without pain. I think I mentioned this in a previous video. That we that we we think suffering is good because it builds character. You'll hear people say that in their little motivational quotes. That it builds courage and, and character. Guys, suffering is it's not suffering's not required to build character or courage. Right? It's the it's it's the courage to look at it that you don't have to suffer, right? And 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 struggle's not necessary. These are all constructs, right, that we put ourselves through. So we're gonna hit this more. This is um, David R. Hawkins. I'll leave a link. I'm going to be talking more about his book. A great dear friend of mine um, uh, mentioned it to me, and I thought, well, this is a good. I, I had forgotten about this. This is a great um, thing to bring up and talk about, and uh, it adds a whole different dimension, right? He's a he's an MD. He, he's a he's a um, PhD. He was a um, psychiatrist. He, brilliant writer. Lots of lots to talk about. Lots to unpack. But this is great about healing the past, right? You have an opportunity, like Viktor Frankl said, to choose again. It's that whole idea about choosing again, right? Love is the powerful emotion. Those upper level emotions are the power. Once you get in the, start, once you get in the habit of those, less and less do you, do you even feel comfortable in those lower level emotions. We'll talk more about this. This is Tom Karen with the Be Something Wonderful studio of Higher Consciousness, where we help you level up, become the best version of yourself. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification button and share and, and, and comment on the video. We love subscribers and we love you to comment and share the video. That's how we get our message out. Yeah, until next time, this is Tom. See you soon.